Okay, let's take a look at two-step equations now. So two-step equations. Um, what, first of all, of course, we want to remember our goal is to isolate the variable so that we can find the value of the variable. Um, and then the other thing to think about is that we want to go in opposite order of the order of operations. So I'm just going to write those down for here. So PEMDAS, right? And that's just to remind us that we want to go, rather than going this way like we do when we're um, evaluating an expression, we want to go the opposite way since we're solving the equation. So addition and subtraction will come first, then multiplication and division, then exponents, then parentheses or grouping. So let's look at this first one. Um, we have 6 equals a over 4 plus 2. Um, so what we want to do, again, we want to get this a all by itself. And the way we do that is we undo our order of operations. So let's just identify all the different operations that we're using here. So it's just a 6, just a constant number on this side. And that's equal to a divided by 4. A divided by 4, remember a fraction is just another way of writing a division problem. And then we're adding right here, we're adding 2. So I want to look at my addition and subtraction first. So I want to undo that first. So since I'm adding 2 on this side, the way to undo that addition, the inverse of addition, the inverse of positive 2, it's going to be subtracting 2 or negative 2. What I do to this side, I have to do to this side. And that gives me 6 minus 2 gives me 4 equals a over 4. And then this cancels out to 0. So I have 4 equals a over 4. So again, remember this is a division symbol, division sign. That fraction line is a division. So the inverse of division is going to be multiplication. So I'm going to multiply, okay, and I'm going to multiply by the multiplicative inverse of the coefficient of a. That's a lot, isn't it? So let's just rewrite it real quick so you can see. So a over 4, that's going to be, that's just a different way of writing. 1 over 4 times a. Because remember, when we multiply a fraction by a, a whole number, we can, we can first convert that number, that whole number into a fraction. So I'd get a over 1. And then that simplifies to just a over 4. So a over 4. That's the same thing as this. So if I want to get the a all by itself, what I need to get rid of is this 1 fourth is this one fourth, okay? So I multiply this by the multiplicative inverse of one over four. So the multiplicative inverse of one over four is four over one, which is just the same thing as four. So I'm gonna multiply this by four, which means I also have to multiply this side by four. Oops, not by 14, by four. So over on this side, I get 4 times 4 equal to 16. And then over on this side, those 4s cancel out. 4s cancel out because, again, we're multiplying 1 4 times 4 over 1, which equals 4 over 4, which equals 1. 1 times a is just a. So I'm left with 16 equals a. And that should be my answer. What I can do to double check is I can plug this back in to the original problem. So I would get 6 equals 16 over 4 plus 2. 16 over 4 equals 4. So I'd get 6 equals 4 plus 2. And yes, that is true. 
Let's go on to this one. So I have negative six plus x over four. So first thing I wanna undo is my, that addition or subtraction problem. It kinda depends on how you think about it. We can, we're either like subtracting this negative six or we're adding a negative six. Same thing, just kind of thought about in a different way. So the additive inverse of negative six is positive six. The way to undo subtraction is to add. So I add six on this side, I have to add six on that side, and I'm left with negative six and positive six is zero. And then that's plus x over four. And then over here I have negative five and six, which is one. So that simplifies and I have x over four equal to one. Now again, same thing. This x over four is the same thing as like one over four x. And I wanna get rid of that one over four. I wanna get rid of that. So the way to get rid of it is I can either think about like I am, I want to find the multiplicative inverse of one over four, which is going to be four over one. And I'm going to multiply by that. Okay. So over here, I'm going to multiply by four over one. Over here, I multiply by four over one. Okay. On this side, these fours cancel out. And I'm left with just one or just x. And that equals one times four over one is just equal to four. And that's my answer. Let's plug it back in. So I get negative six plus four over four equals negative five. That's saying negative six plus one equals negative five, which yes, is true. On to the next one, we have 9x minus 7 equals negative 7. So, again, first I want to do, I want to undo my addition subtraction before I undo my multiplication. So, I have a minus 7 here. The additive inverse of negative 7 is positive 7. I added 7 there, so I have to add 7 over here. And then I get 9x. These cancel out, and I'm left with negative seven plus seven equals zero. Now, there's an invisible multiplication sign right here between the nine and the x. So that tells me I need to use my multiplicative inverse. I use, or I can think about using the inverse of multiplication. So what that means is we're either, so I'll do it both ways. So we well, can either think about it like we're dividing by nine. And if I divide this side by nine, I have to divide this side by nine. Zero divided by nine gives me zero. So x equals zero. Now let's try the other way. So I have nine x equals zero. This way I'm thinking about it like multiplying by the multiplicative inverse of nine of the coefficient of x. So I multiply by one over nine, multiply by one over nine. This is the same exact thing. It's just written different way. And everyone will think about it in a different way as well. So you might like this way better, you might like this way better. It doesn't matter as long as you come up with the same answer. So nine, one over nine times nine gives me one. So I'm just left with X over there. And then zero times one over nine gives me, of course, zero. Let's plug those back into the original equation. So I'd get nine x, oops, nine times zero minus seven equals negative seven. Nine times zero is zero, minus seven equals negative seven. Therefore, negative seven equals negative seven, which yes, is true. Last one, we'll do zero equals four plus n over five. So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of my four. So I'm gonna subtract four over here, which means I subtract four over there. 
combine those two lines together and I get zero minus four equals negative four. And then four minus four equals zero plus n over five, n over five. So now I wanna undo my division going on right here. So I'm gonna multiply by five. The other way to think about it is I have one fifth n and I'm gonna multiply by my multiplicative inverse of one over five, which would again still be multiplied by five. Okay, and then when I do over here, I have to do over here. So I'm gonna multiply by five. These fives cancel out and I'm left with just n equals negative four times five, which is negative 20. Let's plug that back in. So I have zero equals four plus 20 over five. 20 divided by five gives me four. Is there a negative in there in this? Yeah, negative 20, negative 20. Negative 20 divided by five is negative four. So that leaves me with four plus negative four, which yes, is true because four and negative four are additive inverses of each other. So their sum is going to be zero.